I'm really excited to be talking to Mark Powlett today because Mark is a superstar. He's been actually featured on the Jonathan Ross Show and BBC Radio 2, I believe, and he's also been featured in the uh, Mail on Sunday and Good Housekeeping, and he's going to be sharing with us all his insider secrets to how he's secure in publicity. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, Rachel. It's lovely to speak to you and share some of these uh, nuggets. Hopefully, I can help you to give us some ideas. Well, so. I'm really excited because, well, first of all, before we dive straight in, just tell us what is it you actually do and how you help people. Okay, uh, I've done lots of things, and we'll probably talk about those in the past, but what I am at the moment is a, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. So I've done that for a few years. A lot of the other things help me with what I do, and I basically help people with stress and anxiety, helping to end panic attacks. The things you might expect as well, fears, phobias, quitting smoking, losing weight, probably spend more time helping people with stress and anxiety than anything else. That's the kind of the big thing that affects a lot of people. But basically just trying to help people to help themselves. Brilliant. So you've obviously responded because we were we wanted to speak to people that have been successful in PR yeah. and have done it for themselves. And you've had great success. So um, just share with us uh, perhaps... Uh, it might be relevant to say actually your background because you worked in the media, but yeah. actually you don't need to work in the media to be successful, but just tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, I mean, if I tell you my background, people might go, oh, it's, he's got a head start. But the reality <laughs> is that my background has helped me perhaps confidence-wise, but I don't think it's, it's necessarily helped me secure the bigger media things that I've had. Good. So I used to be um, an actor, and I was an actor for quite a long time. I worked in kids' television as well. And, I don't know if anyone knows the kids show Brum, I was the policeman in that, all shot around Birmingham. And uh, then I worked for the BBC, and so I had my own radio show for five years, I was on BBC Coventry and Warwickshire, I've done all of the big stations around the Midlands as well. So my background is in media, so yeah, that, I'll get that out of the way. <laughs> and obviously I do have contacts because of that, but to be perfectly honest, they tend not to be the people that I go to. I would get... The coverage I get, I get in exactly the same way as anyone else can do. And none of the big stuff that's come to me has come via any of my other previous contacts. It's come from the things I do now. Wonderful. So you do this yourself and yeah. it's not that difficult when you know how. And it's something we talk about. You very much kind of connect with the media when there's something newsworthy that you feel you can comment on or put a, uh, an expert comment to or put a spin on. So just share with us a typical story. Well, share with us the most exciting one when you got on the Jonathan Ross show uh, okay. for Radio <laughs> 2. How did that come about? Well, I, well, even I was excited about that. <laughs> um, when anything, anything happens, in, because I'm working with people and helping them using their mind and talking about their mind, there's always lots of stories about that. And because I'm a hypnotherapist, there's often stories about stage hypnosis. Yeah. And so this is one that I saw when it happened. There was an audition for Britain's Got Talent, and Simon Cowell was hypnotised by a dog. Yeah. And um, uh, this short answer to what Jonathan Ross asked me is, no, you can't do that. A dog can't really do it. But what great publicity for Britain's Got Talent. So uh, anytime anything happens, I tend to be, I will write a blog about it as soon as I possibly can, because... Everyone else will be doing it too, but often if you're the first one out there and then you're sharing it on social media and you're talking about it, and I'm lucky to have quite a few followers who will also share it, you'll end up being the person that people will come to. So I'd written about it, um, and I'd also done a video. YouTube videos are brilliant. You know, I, anytime I could do a YouTube video about something, I'll do it, and they get quite a lot of hits. I think the, the one of me and Jonathan Ross has had 75,000, something like that. Wow. So I get, uh, I get out there, and then... What happens is somebody comes back to you, and often when when people work in media, they kind of want you to come to them with a story. Yes. So uh, if you know, I, I worked in radio and I was a presenter, but I'm well aware that producers love it when people come to them with stories. So when you go and you say, "Hey, I could talk about this story," yeah. and of course Simon Cowell being hypnotised by a dog, who doesn't want to hear about that? That's the kind <laughs> of gossip that the people love. Um, and I did some local radio, and it got heard by the producer at Radio 2. And so I got a call, would you talk to Jonathan Ross? Um, and it was brilliant, and I really enjoyed talking to Jonathan Ross. But that's not the end of it, because the next thing that I do, of course, is I then write my own press release to my local paper to say, oh, I've just been talking to Jonathan Ross, and lo and behold, I end up in the local paper too, uh, with a picture of me and Simon Cowell next to me. <laughs> so, now you can't, and you can't buy that kind of publicity. No. Well, you can, but it's very, very expensive. <laughs> so I think it's always really important to like not... Not say, well, that's the end of it. And like I say, the, uh, the video of the talk or the video of the uh, radio interview is on YouTube, and that's constantly getting new hits. And all of these things kind of help to 
build your brand awareness. I mean, in my case, I, I am the brand. Yeah. Um, that sounds terrible me saying that, but but that's how it works. People yeah. will hopefully next time that they think of something they might need my help with, they might think of me because I was talking about Jonathan Ross and talking to, to you know Simon Cowell. So it's just kind of building on all of those things. Blogging is the absolute thing that I think that is a real key, it underpins everything that I do, because people can search and find, I can send people so they can read about it. If I'm writing a press release, it will generally already have a blog written about it. Brilliant. Journalists love it when you write their stories for them, when they can just get the whole thing. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're writing your blog that's newsworthy, you're jumping on the back of it as quick as possible, you're sending it out and you're putting it out to your social networks, but also you are sending it to the media as well. And yeah. it's working for you. They're picking up on it. And, and, and I've, I've talked about this so many times, Mark, and it's so great that you've said exactly the same. You know, the BBC share their media database. I got a call the other day to be on uh, WM, and as a result was on Coventry and Warwickshire uh, yeah. BBC stations because they share their contacts, don't they? But now Absolutely. you're obviously in their contact list as the expert in hypotherapy or anyone yeah. that can comment on those things. And it had a snowball effect for you, and it went to Radio 2, which is just absolutely perfect. So in terms of them, the PR, it's obviously beneficial to your business from your profile point of view. Does it convert into pound, shillings and pence for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, I have, you know, I do quite a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, my business is slightly different perhaps from some people's business in that as a hypnotherapist, people, as I say, I see more people for stress and anxiety. Um, people might see me and they might not immediately think that it's something that they want to do. That Sometimes it takes a bit of courage to pluck up to ask for help. No one should ever be afraid to ask for help, but sometimes it takes time. Yeah. So what you tend to find is that it doesn't con it doesn't convert into pounds, shillings and pence straight away, yeah. but it's months or even years down the line. But of course, I've been doing it for a long time, so there's always a constant stream of people. And, you know, I still see people who come to me because I was in a kids' television programme that was, I don't know, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, I work with a lot of children as well. And lots of their parents come because they know that I was in a kids' television programme. So it's very kind of diverse from the sort of things that I do. But when you do a whole range of things, it makes people more aware. And hopefully what happens is a lot of people will think, if it's something to do with hypnotherapy, oh, I think I know somebody who, who might be able to help. So it's, it's, it's a very long-term strategy. You know, yes. I, I kind of enjoy doing all this stuff anyway. Some people find it a chore. I, I love doing it. You know, yeah. and if something happens, I will write a press release and I will be on it. In the local paper three or four weeks ago, there was a story about a snake that escaped and got into somebody's car and it was on the front page. So I, I, I'd actually been away for the weekend. And when I came back, there were like three or four inquiries about snake phobias. Now, I deal with people with snake phobias. It's not the most common thing <laughs> yeah. in Redditch where I'm based. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I thought, oh, this has got to be a good story. So I was straight on the phone to one of the journalists. Um, Listen, I've had a lot of calls about this. Would you like to do something about it? And lo and behold, I've got, I've got, I don't know what it's there yet. I end up in the paper with me and the snake man, who was a snake. Brilliant. <laughs> around our job, talking about fears and phobias. So it's always great because they love it when you go to them with a story. Yeah. And if you've got something different, Something unusual, yeah. some, you know. That's why things like the uh, Jonathan Ross thing comes about because it's a it's a great unusual story, you know. Yeah. I've done Mail on Sunday, slightly kind of overquoted and salacious, but that's the Mail on Sunday. Uh, don't be hypnotised by this fraudulent nonsense. Therapist Savage, you're back in the room, which was the Phil Schofield game show. Now, ah. I've written a lot of blogs about that when I first heard it come out. So yeah. when all of the interviews were happening and all the people papers were looking for quotes. Uh, loads of them came to me. Brilliant. And again, once you get in one, the other papers, you know, I won't name any names, but a lot of papers sometimes reappropriate their, their stories. Of so course. you find yourself in other things. And, uh, and I, I get Google Alerts, which if you don't get Google Alerts for your business, then it's a brilliant thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and you can sign up and it will just tell you can have phrases or things that you search for. So I get them for hypnotherapy. If I see a story come up, I'll be first on it. What happens is often a story will come up in a paper, sometimes a foreign paper, I'll click on it, and there'll be a picture of me and a quote, and, I, and they've <laughs> taken it from somewhere else. But I've had to do nothing for that. You know, I've already done an interview. I've already spoken about it. I've already made a video. And, you know, there was one in a, in a Netherlands paper this morning where they've taken a video I've done about a, local, a story um, uh, that happened recently, and it's now on their website. All of those things, of course, all kind of feed in. Yeah. Uh, when you kind of add them all up, they're the things that, and they, I, mean, I could almost sit back and do nothing, you know, but I quite like doing what I do, so I, I still kind of carry on doing it. But it's very kind of self-perpetuating when you 
when you just take the time to do it. Just I, I, think, the I, I think that's the key, isn't it? It's just creating the time and it's having the confidence to do it and, and the media connections. And we help people. So if you want any help to know how to connect to the media, we can help you with that. We have access to all the journalists. So so in, in your situation, Mark, if someone had a story that they were hypnotherapists and they used our database service, they could send an email out the press of a button, you know, really, really quickly. And I'm sure you've got your media contacts in your list as well that you can do the same to. And yeah. it builds up in time. And you're right. Sometimes it can happen literally overnight. You've got a great story. You can get media coverage overnight. But it is a still part of a long-term strategy, isn't it? It should be part Absolutely. of your marketing mix that you do. Yeah. But what is great, the Google Alerts. I've talked about this so many times to my community. You know, it's free to do. Set up a Google Alert. Our phrases in your industry, on your business, you know, um, and then you can, you've got a newsworthy story that you can write about. But connect with your local BBC stations, you know, and then because they've all got the Facebook pages, haven't they? They're always putting media yeah. shout outs out, you know, and just put, you know, comments on there to see whether you can help. And they will come back to you. Do you ever respond to media requests yourself, Mark? Um, occasionally, but I mean, to, I'll be, I may be slightly different from a lot of people in that I just think, oh, okay, I've, I've got a bit of time, I'll get in this or I'll get on that. And I tend to, it just kind of tends to happen. Brilliant. And then it sort of snowballs, and then people come, like, I've just done something for good housekeeping for November where, you know, Stuff does tend to come to me, and and it's not you know I, I could say well I'm lucky, but I, I'm not lucky. I work pretty hard. To yeah. be perfectly fair. Yes. Well, I could be paying somebody to do what I do, and I'd probably have to pay them, you know, a lot of money to work exclusively for me and do the amount of stuff that I do. But I'm very happy writing my own press releases. I mean, I I even do my own photos for press releases. You send mm -hmm. a press release, and it's got a photo that's perfectly suitable, and I'll I'll get a photo done that is in the style of the local newspaper even. Yeah. So I, I, you know, we all know, take a look at your own papers, see how they do it. Yeah. You send a photo in that style, they love a picture to go with a story. Yeah. And it kind of sort of helps for it, it you know, it snowballs, you know, and it, it, one thing leads to another. And I have to say, I, I'm quite, you know, I, I'm a lucky or have I worked for it, but people tend to come to me now. But it's taken, you know, it's brilliant. Time. But I can hear your enthusiasm, which is which is just brilliant because PR is fun, isn't it? Talking to the media yeah, is fun, it. and it's always great when you're talking about something you know and that you're yeah. passionate about. And anyone that wants publicity for their business should be in that position. And I think some people, you know, Mark, feel them fear, have the fear of the journalists, and also maybe think, oh, I don't know if I'm the expert, I'm not qualified, or this, that, and the other. Yes, you need to be kind of, um, you need to know your subject matter, don't you? You need to be good at what you're doing, but you don't have to be the top of the top, do you? You just have to be good at what you're doing to be the expert and the source of in, a source of knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to be the person that, you know, there's lots of things that are important, and one is to be a personable person, someone yeah. that they want to talk to that is available as much as possible. You know, often things will be short notice, and if you're not available, someone else will do it. But that's okay. Maybe your chance will be there another time. Yeah. But really, they're looking for people that are flexible and easy to work with and, yeah. and enthusiastic and all that kind of thing works. You know, I used to be an actor, and one of the things that directors often say is they're not looking for the best actor to work with. They're looking for an actor who's all right but is easy to work with. Yes. That, that is much more important, and that, that goes for this as well. Yeah. Journalists are, are, journalists are crying out. Your BBC local stations, you know, when I was doing, I used to do a, a show, a daily show, and in a three-hour show, we'd have three items per hour. So we're looking for nine stories a yeah. day. Yeah. Now, uh, if you have a story, you can get that story. You will get that story on the radio. You know, it's, it isn't that hard. And the producers there, the people working on all these shows, or all the assistants there, all the, the lowly people who are the ones that often do the booking, they want you. They want your help. They will be over the moon if you get in touch. Yeah, and also it doesn't have to be just a relevant news story that's in the news at the moment. You can just go to, like you say, with something quirky, a debate, because exactly what you said, BBC are 60 to 70% talk, aren't they? So they need... Yeah to have, like you say, so many stories per hour or per show, that they will be delighted. And they only plan really 24 hours ahead, if you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's often you get a call saying, what are you doing in the next half hour? Oh, you're live on air. I had it last <laughs> week. I had two phone calls, you know, just like that, just to help them out because something came up and it was topical and they got me in their database. You yeah. know, so we know how it works. But again, for anyone that's new to it, it's a little bit scary. You've worked in radio. I've worked in radio myself and done lots of radio interviews. So we're kind of... We're used to it, but it isn't too scary. They're normal people, like you say, and they're grateful, aren't they, for your help. And right. you don't have to go into the studio, neither do you. You can do it on a landline, and, and yep. sometimes I'll even send the, the, the radio truck out to you, and, and, and you can be interviewed on the premises. 
Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're more than happy to do it on a landline. They'll always ask you to come in, but if you can't come in and they yeah. want you, they'll, they'll do, do it. And they'll, like you say, they'll send a radio car and someone will hold a microphone for you. But they, they are always keen on, on stories. They're always keen on ideas. And if you've got an idea, then, sh- you know, share it. Just share with us then, Mark. And I'm kind of taking advantage of you a little bit because I've interviewed lots of radio producers and presenters. But again, it's just nice to reiterate... I think also sometimes we don't know what the etiquette is, is to kind of promote our business and what we do. And you have to be really careful that you're not blatantly advertising yourself all the time. But I know the BBC, especially the regional stations, are very generous by introducing you and what you do. And you can occasionally say, look, if you go to my website, there's a free download that anyone, you know, like on how to overcome anxiety. That's acceptable, is it? Not so much on the national BBC, you know, although they still do credit you occasionally. But what's the etiquette in promoting yourself well you know is there an etiquette or do you try to kind of slip stuff in Lots yes but you'll have seen it on you know breakfast tv people will say yeah. um well where, where i come from at marpowlet.co.uk and then they'll start talking yeah um you know like you say you, you can't really over promote yourself but and certainly as a presenter i would always make sure that i would give the website at the end and, and certainly name check again the person that i was talking to so you'll always get a credit but of course, you've also got if you could you can take that audio. The BBC tend to be fairly happy if you to take their audio and use it on something else to, to share with other people. Yeah, and they quite like your show. So ITV aren't very keen on you sharing things, but the BBC, who will do most of the talk radio anyway, yeah. they they are very happy for you to do that. So you can you can kind of share those things. But actually, you uh, most generous presenters will give you the opportunity. And Jonathan Ross name texted me again at the end, you know, and made sure that everybody knew who I was. He introduced me promptly at the start you know so uh, my, my phone went mad and all my friends going you were just on Jonathan Ross <laughs> and you know I've done quite a lot of stuff and it's the most impressive thing I think that, that anyone all my friends were much more impressed with that than anything I've ever done so there you go but I enjoyed it and I loved it I had a great time you know yeah he's um he's he's you know probably one of the best most well-known presenters in the country and he he will always give as good as he gets and more and so will I. So yeah. instead of being fearful, people said, oh, were you scared? I said, no, I actually loved it because I yeah. loved being able to challenge his perceptions and whether he agrees or disagrees. Yeah. It, was a, it, was great. it was terrific fun. I think that's the thing. Sometimes people think, well, oh, I'd be really nervous and what will I do? And when people used to come in to me, they used to say, what are you going to ask me before an interview? And I said, I, I have no idea because um, this is a conversation and I don't go to the pub and say, so this evening in the pub, <laughs> this is my agenda. I should be saying to you, how about the weather? And we'll talk about that for three minutes. But that's not what we do. We yeah, have a conversation, and actually, that puts people, I think, often more at ease because if you know what you're talking about, you don't, like you say, you don't have to be the greatest expert in the world. Yeah. But if you know what you're talking about, you'll know more than the presenter. Absolutely, you'll know more than the journalist, and that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, and what we try and say as well is because it can be quite nerve wracking as a business owner. You are, you know, you have got an objective with PR. Your objective is to get a few key messages across about your business, about how you're helping people. You know, but it is a natural conversation. But you do still want to try and focus on getting a couple of key messages across in there which you can do but that comes with training and with time and we've got media training interviews that we can help you with can I ask you Mark uh, you know because you've had such great success and it almost seems so easy but I know actually how easy it can be it's about just the confidence to do it and having the connections but how often would you say you spend a week on average or let's say how on on average if you were going to get into the mail on Sunday for example how long would that take you from writing the blog to getting it out there is it hours is it days how long roughly no if i'm writing a blog i will write a blog i'm quite a quick writer because actually the most important thing is to get it out there there's no point in making it the world's greatest piece of writing if nobody's ever going to read it yeah so probably the blogs that i have that have been most read will be the ones i've written the fastest yeah um i i've done writing stuff anyway i've written for the guardian and so i have done writing and i've obviously come from a journalistic background but i will I will write a blog in 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, and I'll get it out of there. Now, if I then add to that and something else different comes up and I think of something else, I may update it, yeah. but that original blog's already there, and it's already getting hits. It's already getting people looking at it. I've shared it on social media. When I do a blog, it will be up, and it will be being hopefully shared, you know, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes later. And that's probably the key to how I manage to get a lot of media coverage when these stories happen, because I'm... I'm the first hypnotherapist doing it. So lots of yeah. the papers may pick up it and then maybe newspaper agents put out a story and they've all put in their press release. But here's my angle on it. So the, the book that came out recently, the, the Rabbit Who Wants to Fall Asleep, which is 
A Way for Children to Fall Asleep is a new book that's um, topping the Amazon bestseller charts. I had a couple of alerts about it, but not that it was hypnotherapy. And then I read the book and realized it's a hypnosis script for children, but no one was saying it. Right. So I blogged about it. I've done a video, and I've now appeared in some press worldwide from that. And the, I did a quick video that was only about two and a half minutes long on YouTube with my own tips for how to get your child to sleep. It had 6,000 hits in the first two to three wow. days. Brilliant. So when you get out there and you're doing things that people are going to be looking for, yeah. then they will fi they'll find you. Fantastic. It's just amazing. And, and, and obviously from you, your own personal point of view, you're, you said you, yourself you're based in the Midlands in Redditch. Yeah. So, you know, but you're getting national coverage. So obviously... Yeah, well, I, I work via Skype. Well, so that's I, what I, I was going to say. I, so I, I work worldwide anyway. I'm brilliant. working with somebody in Los Angeles later today, although it's, it's this morning in Los Angeles. <laughs> so... Um, it's great for, for, for any kind of business, really. And even yeah. if your business is a local niche business, why not get nationwide press coverage? Because Absolutely. you can still use that to your advantage. You can put the pictures up in your office. You know, yeah. you can show them to people on your Facebook page. You can put them on your website. You know, like a lot of people, I obviously have a press page on, on my website with lots of, you know, things that I've done on it. Brilliant. Um, all of these things you can share. Well, what would be great is obviously um, give us your name, check on your website again, because it would be great if anybody's interested in your service, you know, they can connect with you anyway. But, you know, it would be great. And I'll put the link up if you've got the press section on your website so they can have a look at that and just see how, how you make it active. So if you could give us a final kind of um, pearl of wisdom, if you like, to, to most of my entrepreneurs and business owners, they are probably new to PR, or they've dabbled with it, or they definitely want to start doing it. What tip would you give them? I say don't be afraid, because um, the people that want the stories, whether they're on radio, whether they're in print or on television, they, they want the stories. Yeah. And if you don't tell them about it, if you don't put yourself out there, then they're never going to know about you. And if you're too scared to write a press release or phone them up, write a blog. And even in the blog, you can put, I'm available to talk about this thing, or I'm, I, I'm happy to talk about it. And it can get picked up. I'm pushing them out there anyway. But I also have people who come to me for things where I've written something a long time ago, and I've forgotten about it, and suddenly I get a call out of the blue. So <laughs> once you've done it, once it's out there, it's, all, it's the internet. It's always going to be there. And it's kind of will carry on and on. So don't be afraid, my tip. Mark, you are a superstar. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Thank you so That's much. It. And if anybody wants to connect with Mark, all these details are below. And if we can help you in any way with PR, get in touch. I'll be happy to have a discovery call with you and then we can just see how we can help you. But Mark, thank you once again and we look forward to following your progress. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> see you later, darling. Take care. Yeah,